We're talking beef short ribs. Why? Because they're one of the easiest dinners that you can make in a slow cooker and they're delicious. And joining us now to show us how to make them is Chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. I can't wait. Yeah, this is one of the great secrets. Uh, when you think of what we used to call the cheap cuts of meat, uh, those would be meats that need to cook a long time because they're tougher. It could be something like a pot roast or, or, or round roast or stew beef. Well, beef short ribs fall in that same category because you can't just throw it on the grill uh, or pop it under the broil or next thing you know, five, ten minutes later, you've got a really nice piece of meat. It's got all the connective tissue which makes it very tough to cook which means that what you want to do is what we call braising. Uh, cook it in a liquid, uh, sort of as you would do with a, with a pot roast, and it takes a couple of hours in a regular stove top uh, or uh, in the oven until uh, it's cooked through. However, we've got the slow cook option. I was going to say, this is the perfect way then to do that because this is liquid and, and low heat for a lot of time. Exactly, and one of the things, and, I, and, and I've talked to Ashley about this so many times, especially you know, when, you, when you're so busy, you've got a family, uh, one of the things you often don't want to do when you've got uh, a stew or even short ribs of beef is and a slow cooker is to do things ahead of time. Brown some onions, brown the meat, especially if short in time, as you like to say, set it and forget set it. Set it and forget it. As to pop everything in there and walk away. So that's the beauty of this particular dish and so many with beef short ribs. You don't have to brown the meat. You don't have to do all kinds of prep throw it in, walk away, come back eight hours later, you've got a spectacular meal. Now let's talk the meat real quick, because you were saying you can use some of these cheaper cuts of meat. When yes. I'm going to the store, I often see cubed stew meat or yes. all these different sorts of meat. What's the ideal meat that I want to look for besides a short rib? You want to look for a couple of things. One is, well, two of them, uh, a chuck roast uh, or round roast. Chuck both roast, round roast. Both of those uh, are used for the uh, slower uh, roasts uh, in the oven, uh, like I said, like a pot roast. Uh, and this would be the third category of that as well. And another thing that also gives us a lot of flavor, this is a bone-in uh, piece of uh, beef, as, as you'll see right there, the bone's right in the bottom. And the advantage of that, and you can see it right there too, is it's going to give it more flavor. Uh, you can get these boneless, it'll still be very good, but since you're going to have eight hours anyway, you get even more rich flavor Might out as of it. Well. Mm -hmm. So how do we get started? It's very easy. Uh, you start just by cutting up carrots and onions, throw them in, and then you make a quick sauce. You throw all the liquids together. What I like to do, one of the favorite things I like to, uh, to show is this also has ginger in it. This has a couple of different flavors that you ordinarily wouldn't necessarily see in something like this. Uh, one of them is ginger, and I prefer fresh ginger over dry ginger. And what I also like to do, one of the great secrets they never teach in the supermarket, is peeling ginger with a spoon. And so you just kind of scrape down the sides like that, and it comes right off. And that way there's less waste, and it's just, it's, it's easier. You're not trying to cut around little nooks and crannies. Well, because I'm going to show, yeah, I want to show everybody the difference, because I'm doing this the way that I've done it at home for years and mm -hmm. years. And I'm lo even though I'm cutting it really close, if you can see here, I'm losing a whole lot of ginger. On every slice. And, it's, and since ginger often has these little knobs and other parts sticking out around the side, uh, you, know, you can just work your spoon around that. It's great and tip. so for this recipe, I like to grate the ginger just like that, but uh, you can also just cut, chop it up, you can slice it up, mince it up, however you want to do it. So that's the ginger piece of it. Another thing of it that makes this a little different is I'm using a Madeira. And you might have heard the phrase fortified wine. Mm -hmm. And that would be something like a sherry or Madeira or Marsala, like chicken Marsala. And what a fortified wine is, it's a sweetened wine. And that means they take regular old wine, and while it's turning itself into wine from the grapes, they add brandy or something like that. And so what that does is it gives it a stronger, sweeter flavor. Uh, so unlike a sweet wine, you don't have something like uh, a glass of Marsala with dinner. No. But you might have it beforehand, but it's great to cook with. I give it a little whiff. Yep. And a great thing about that, about $5 a bottle for the stuff that's very good to cook with. It is sweet. It's, it's very nice. sweet smelling. So really, all you want to do is take these ingredients, you know, start with uh, the ginger, as I said there, uh, cut up some onion, cut up some carrot, uh, and throw those in the base of the pan. And now, are you forming a liquid, or are you going to let the beef and the onions and the carrots form its own liquid? Uh, I'm going to uh, be giving it a liquid on top of it, because one of the rules of braising is you need a good amount of liquid. Some, if it's a solid piece of meat, you want it to come up at least halfway up the side of the meat, but with the ribs and there's a lot of air in there, just this will be enough. We're going to be going with uh, about a, a cup of uh, beef stock, uh, about a quarter of a cup of the marsala, uh, a little rice vinegar to give it a little bit of a bite, a little soy sauce to give it a little richness and, and a little salt, 
And I like to use agave for sweetener. You can use sugar, you can use honey, you can do any of these things, and that's what's gonna be the forming, uh, uh, the liquid that's gonna be in there. Now, can you do this just in water and if, say forget all these other things and just take a piece of meat and do it in water? Yes, you can in that it's the, the liquid. Oh, you're not gonna have all these great flavors. You'll have like a, a meaty flavored liquid, <laughs> but this is gonna give you meat all soup. that. Everybody exactly. So now a second piece of all of this is if you, you can come home from work and have this ready for dinner. If you do this a day ahead, and uh, that's what I did, is uh, you can uh, chill, chill it all, you chill the liquid, and this would be a bit of fat coming off, because as you can see with the ribs, there is also uh, some fat in there. Uh, after it chills, uh, the fat will come up, skim, skim it right it off. off, and you're making it even healthier. And it gives it a better, better mouth feel, as we call it. It's not as, uh, uh, not so much fatty in the mouth, but it tastes a little bit uh, richer. Fuller and richer. Exactly, Perfect. so you've got that, and, and everything goes right in the pan. Now, you might say to yourself, how much do I want to buy? Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I like to suggest is going, these are the larger size ribs, going with two ribs per person. Because as you will see after, uh, it really does cook down. And a bit of the, uh, the, um, the fat will come off, but it comes down to a smaller piece. That's why I wanted to show you what this looks like raw, because it doesn't look like anything like that once it's cooked. Okay. Well, I cannot wait to see how this turns into something else. We'll let you get to it check in with this and taste some of it, which is my favorite part. It's going to be good. At the end of the show. And today on Mass Welcome back to Mass Appeal, and we're back with personal chef Bill Collins from chefbill.com. You missed it earlier, Ash. Slow cooker I beef ribs. I missed it, but I smell it. Ooh, it smells great in here. Well, I happen to have some right here huh. in the slow cooker. <clears throat> Doesn't it smell amazing? Amazing. And you can see how it came out, because actually I'm going to take one of the ribs out now. It literally fell off the bone. Exactly. Now, some of them, a couple of them still stayed on the bone, so you now have a choice where you can present it. You'll put it right on the bone, on the plate, just like that, on like the that. bone. That looks good. Or you can take it off the bone, just as this one is, and present it on the plate like that as well. And that's why I wanted to uh, show the difference between the raw meat, uh, where it doesn't look anything like it, where you've got the, the bone right there, and, oh, I happen to have one right Here's there. the raw meat right here. And then you've got the cooked one right there. So some people like the look of the, uh, of the bone in there. And it's really a nice, very tender uh, piece of meat. And so now... Yeah, and that's, it, it does this, this falls right off. It falls right off. You don't and, even have to work for it. That's and you've nice. got all of this really nice looking sauce right there. So the sauce is, do you recommend eating the sauce? Because sometimes, Absolutely. Oh. well, you know what, it's funny, yes. sometimes in slow cooker <laughs> recipes though, you make something and you put an onion in there. They say to take the onion out and don't eat it. But in this case you can, okay. because uh, everything is, is cooked you know, nice and slowly. They're full with so much flavor and they're cooked all the way through. Those are nice, soft uh, carrots and onions in there. Now Chef Bill, for people who missed the segment earlier because they're kicking themselves and yes. they're saying, Darn, that looks good. I would like to eat some. Mm -hmm. What went into this? This was, uh, we started out with the beef ribs, mm -hmm. and you can see they come right up. Look how tender they are. Oh, oh. my, I just want to ladle this yeah. and, and drink it. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the beef ribs, but the we've got carrots and onions to start with. But then we put in some fresh ginger, made a liquid, uh, a braising sauce of, uh, we've got some agave, you can use honey, beef stock, uh, rice vinegar, we use Madeira, but you can use sherry or any kind of one of the sweetened fortified wines, uh, some fresh garlic, and it's really that simple. And you throw it in and you walk away. And you come back eight hours later and you've got this great presentation. And it tastes so good, you can see how tender that is. And that's because, again, it cooks so long. And it soaks in juice, too. It does. So you've got the flavors, the juice, uh, the flavors come from the meat. It's so juicy. It, it, and plus with the lid on top, it just keeps the liquids and the juices and the steam just keeps rolling around it to break down all that connective tissue, as we call it, and end up with a really nice, tender beef short rib. And it's so nice to come home after a long day of work and just know that your dinner's already made. It, it, exactly. And as you noted, uh, we came over that you open up the front door and it smells great. Your house is going to smell spectacular. Yeah, forget the, you know, the little plug -ins. The potpourri. You don't yeah, need the potpourri. You know, I don't need it to smell like fresh <laughs> uh -huh. linen. I want it to smell like short I ribs. I want meat potpourri. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it. And, and and it's just, it, it, would you like to try a flavor? I, I taste You know, this. I was waiting for you to ask. Well, but you I, know, <laughs> I, I know you're so polite and, and mannered like that. Oh, that looks good. It looks so good. Around. I don't want to take too big of a bite, you know. Oh, I do have to talk are. still. But Thank you very much. You want that one? And you'll notice how now you can talk with your mouthful that you broke that apart with a fork you didn't mm -hmm. have a knife there you didn't have a steak knife that is oh. melts in my mouth and you know what the other nice part is with this oh. normally if you want to get good meat and you grill it or something it costs you eight nine ten bucks a pound 
but this meat is markedly less expensive. So if you throw it in the slow cooker, it's a cheap beef dinner. That's exactly how it oh. works. Bill, that is so, so yummy. Right. Sometimes, right. you know, my family will say, like, was it really good? And I'm like, yeah, it was. It really was. Like, I'm very genuine. And everything yeah. really does taste so good. But Thank this you. is like... I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home tonight, yeah. and I'm gonna make it. Yeah, and so I and can have it in the morning. Well, exactly. you know what you need to do, Ashley. You grab a copy of this recipe, mymassappeal.com. Head to the website, grab it. It'll be there later today.